So recording a macro is a recorder that you can start in Excel. So you click that recorder and then, then, it, then it starts, okay? And then everything you do in Excel, until you stop the recorder, that'll get recorded and Excel will translate that recording into VBA code that it'll store uh, somewhere I'll show you. And then when you need it, you can call on that macro, which is a macro, and the code is executed replicating all the steps that you did when you recorded it. That means that you can record something and then you can play it every time you need it to. So if you, re if you record something that takes at th three minutes to execute normally, like apply this formatting, delete this cell, stuff like that, then the next time you need to do the exact s same thing, you don't need to spend three minutes on it. You only need to click a button or use a shortcut. That's the idea of recording a macro. Now, writing a macro is just opening this page I'll show you in a minute and, and typing it out. That means you need to remember a lot, of, a lot of, maybe not a lot of stuff, that depends on what you need to build, but you need to remember something and, and maybe look up on Google. You need to learn more. You can't just um, record everything. But for what I'm gonna show you now, you can record it and let's get to that. Okay, so to record a macro, you need to, you need to start the recording. And you do that down here to the left, there's a button called Macro Recorder, but also you can find it up here on the View tab and you can go to Macros and hit Record Macro. So record a macro here, click that button and then a dialog box appears and you need to enter information into that dialog box. And all of this is not really important, so just listen to what I tell you here. The, you need to enter a macro name and then eventually, or not, optionally, a shortcut. So if you need to, if you want to play this macro from a shortcut, you need to, um, you need to type a shortcut obviously, but also you can give the macro a name. The name is not really important now. If you have a lot of macros, that might be important, but for now it's not important. So I, I'm just gonna call this test. And then I'm gonna assign a shortcut for this. Let's use Control Shift O. All right, that's great. Okay, so after I hit the recording button, I accidentally clicked a few cells. And we'll see later what that means. But for now, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna apply the steps that I want to apply and I want it to record. So I'm gonna go to the Home tab. Moving through the tabs up here, it's not gonna re be recorded, so that doesn't matter. But when you hit record, you need to be mindful, not like I just did before. You need to be mindful of what you do because everything you do will be recorded. So here, I wanna apply some formatting. Let's go up here and hit this. Yeah, change the cell color into this and maybe change the font color into this. Let's make it bold too. And yeah, that's about it, I think. I'm gonna stop the recording now. And I can click this button right here or go to the View tab again into Macros and hit Stop Recording. And now the macro is recorded. I'm gonna remove this formatting here just so you can see what happens now when I click this cell, for example, and then I execute the macro. So Control Shift O, right? That's the shortcut I assigned to this. So when I hit that, the cursor goes to Michael Harris and the formatting is applied. We're, we're done with recording this macro basically. So I executed these steps and now we have the macro recorded. And when I played this, it went straight to B4 and executed these steps that I recorded. The problem with the macro here is that I want to be able to select any cell and then apply the formatting very quickly. But whenever I do that and whenever I use the macro, it goes straight to B4 and, um, and applies the formatting there. So that's not really helpful at all. So let's have a look under the hood to see what's really going on here. So I'm gonna hit Alt F11 to bring up the, this little bad boy right here. Okay, so this is the VB editor. This is where all the VBA code is stored. So whenever you record something, it goes in here. First of all, 
the, the code is stored in what is called a module and the modules are right here. This is module one, this is module two. And module two contains the macro that I just recorded. So module number one is just a recording I did earlier. And this is the recording I did now. So they're stored in these modules. It's not really more important, more things to say about that for now. So, so we'll just, uh, we'll actually minimize this or maybe close this, I think. And then you'll be able to see this macro that I recorded. These three, I think, simple steps. I changed the cell color, the font color, and the and I made it bold. Those changes translates into this VBA code. And that basically means that you have a machine that can translate normal actions into code. And that means you have an entire code database at your fingertips because you can always just record something and then look into the code and see how to actually write the VBA code for it. The problem with recording macros is that it's very inefficient this seems like a lot of code for a simple action and that's true actually because the macro recorder records stuff very inefficiently compared to when you're writing it so this could be written much easier but let's just let's just keep it as it is right now because this is a simple macro that basically takes these actions uh, that i just did and 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 put some um, make, makes you able to repeat those. But when we look at the code, we see something that is familiar because I selected the cell B4. B4, the cell number B4, not before. And you can see that right here. You can see something called range B4 select. And that actually means that we select range, which is a range of cells, but it's only one cell called B4. So B4 is selected. And then with the selection, we're going to do all these kinds of things. The problem is that I select the cell first here in the code. That means it's every time I use the code, it'll be the same cell that gets selected. So actually what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I'm going to delete this code and then I'm going to run it and I can run it up here from the little bit of little tiny play button up here. And when I do that, look to the left here, B6 is now formatted differently. Also, if I select this cell and go into the VBA editor again and place this up here, you can see that that cell is formatted as well. That means that I can now select the cell and use the shortcut that I assigned to this, Control Shift O, and just format away with all I've got. Okay, so that's how you record a macro and change a little bit about it to make it work. I started recording the macro and then I clicked the cell. I shouldn't have done that. If I didn't do that, if I just had the cell selected from the start and then applied the formatting, then this, the, this code wouldn't be here in the first place. And that means that I didn't have to go in and delete it. But anyway, just know that when you have something called selection and you are not selecting anything specifically uh, from the start, the, th the things that happening that happens below this will happen to this selection.